Hey, I'm here to show you the new features of Logos 10, which is released today. Today being October 10th, 2022. Now there's a lot of new features. However, I want to focus on one that I'm most excited about. And so I just want to show you what it actually is. First off though, uh, if you're thinking, uh, do I really want to update? I don't like when apps totally change their look and I can't figure out how to do things anymore. I'm right there with you. I don't like when uh, developers do that. Logos hasn't done that. What you see on the screen here is Logos version 10 and you see it is very similar. Some of the differences um, are icons, so they've moved some of the menus just to icons. And as you hover over and you notice some of them are identical. Uh, so this is Bible icon, there's your fact book, there's your documents, there's your guides, and there's the rest of the tools. Other than that, it's looking pretty much the same. You have the same buttons on the side, you have the same ability to have your own links at the top. One small change to the user interface in the uh, program settings is that you can have your toolbar on the left hand side if you want and then it goes down the left hand side like you see there. I still prefer it on the top so that's where I'm sticking it. Now in terms of upgrades to Logos 10 what are you getting if you uh, decide that you do want to update? Um, there's a number of features I just want to highlight some that I am most excited by. Uh, first off there's more church history in the fact book, and that comes via something called the Lexham Dictionary of Church History. And so they're just integrating more information into that fact book. If you recall, the fact book came in a number of years ago. It's kind of the one-stop shop for asking questions about concepts, people, places, things, and even down to words in terms of uh, Greek and Hebrew words you can ask right from the fact book. And so they've just integrated more information. In fact, I think Logos 10 is a lot about integrating uh, in new information and new things in a consistent way right inside Logos. And I'll, I'll um, touch uh, point on that in terms of integration as I go through the rest of the video here, uh, this list. Um, so you have fact book integration then throughout uh, Logos even more than it was before. In other words, if you have it turned on in Bibles and books, the fact book will uh, under, underline more words that you can click on to open the fact book to read about. And so there's just more integration of the fact book throughout. This has been asked for for a long time, the text to speech feature on mobile so that if you have a book in Logos and you would like to listen to it with the, you know, fairly good automated voices that we have nowadays like Siri, etc., then you can uh, now do that on the new mobile, which is uh, coming out soon as well with Logos 10, so the mobile version. Within Logos on the desktop and the mobile, there's now auto translation. Again, this isn't a feature I would necessarily use being a native English speaker. However, I really appreciate that Logos is uh, trying to invest in uh, the, com the wider community of the church where you have people who uh, their primary language is something else. And so it's tapping into the auto translation features that you know are getting better and better all of the time but it's doing it right inside Logos. So you don't need to leave the app and go to Google Translate or whatever it is to try and get a good translation of an English text. You can do it right in Logos, and I think that's a great thing. The Sermon Builder, which I love. I always uh, write my sermons in Logos, and I preach from Logos usually on my iPad. Um, this is uh, just a little feature in the Sermon Builder now that you can search for quotations and uh, illustrations that might be relevant and bring them right in. You don't need to leave the sermon builder. And related to that, you can now import your previous sermons. So I have a bunch of sermons, usually it was in Apple Pages, sometimes in Microsoft Word. And prior to sermons, you know, being introduced in Logos, you couldn't easily bring those in. But now you can. You can import them all so that you have it in one consistent library in one space. So a great thing. The print library catalog is the, like I said, if I had to choose one feature for Logos 10 that I'm most excited by, it is that, and I'm going to show you it in a second. But let me just go to the last one that I really appreciate, and that is the speed improvements or the performance enhancements. 
you will notice that Logos will index a lot faster. In fact, just before I did this video, I was hoping that I could hit record quick enough uh, because Logos was doing some indexing. I had the little blue number one here, it was indexing, and I was hoping to start recording quick enough for you to see how quickly the percentage numbers were going up, um, but it was done by the time I hit record. So the indexing feature uh, goes a lot quicker, um, but in more important than that is that the search happens a lot quicker too. So there's a lot of speed improvements and this is under the hood stuff so it's not necessarily something flashy in Logos that you're seeing um, but it is affecting the entire system so your indexing is going to happen quicker, your searching is going to happen quicker, the loading of items is going to happen quicker and they if you are an Apple user and if you're using a recent a more recent Apple uh, Mac then they have, you know, that's going to be helpful for you because they're uh, tapping into the uh, silicon chips. And if you are a PC user, and I have a lot of PC user friends who and students who say, man, Logos takes up a lot of time and energy to load things. It takes up a lot of resources on the computer. You'll notice an improvement there as well. So very appreciative of the speed improvements in Logos 10. So let's talk about this print library catalog because like I said, this is my favorite feature of Logos 10 that's new and coming. So obviously Logos has a huge library and depending on how much uh, you've collected over the years, you either have a large or a small library. So what Logos has done is they've taken into consideration the fact that most of us still have physical books and that we like our physical books and yet we do a lot of our research in Logos, at least I do. And so what the physical library catalog has done is enabled us to add to our library the list of physical books in our, our on our shelves. And so the way that we would do this is you see in the library window now you have something called add to library. And when you click add to library, it's basically the whole Logos catalog sitting there of things that you either have already or don't have. So it's the entire catalog. But you will see, so I'm just going to type in uh, the title of a book that I've done beforehand just so that we can see and so there you go who is God by Richard Bauckham so I've already added to it um, but you see when I search it you're gonna have preview and buy because I do not have this in my Logos library and then there is a, a button right beside it. I'll click this you see add to print library so I'm gonna add to print library because I do have this book on my shelf. I don't have it in Logos, so I add it to the print library. So what that does now is that book will actually uh, appear in my library list in Logos now. So you see there, who is God? It has all of the information on it. Everything is there. When I click on it, obviously it's not going to open the entire book. It's only going to open a portion because I don't own it, and that's fine. Okay, so it's listed there. Now this is where the magic comes in. This is why I'm so appreciative of this particular addition to Logos 10, is that even though I do not own that book, Logos has that book indexed in their servers, and it allows me to tap into that. And so if I click open a uh, search window now, you see in the search window, we have the typical all, which kind of catches everything, you have Bible, media, clause, morph, syntax. These are things that we've seen before. Um, it also has other, which is kind of, again, almost like a catch-all, but it's focusing on all of, all of your stuff. But books is a new one. So in both books and all, obviously the all is catching everything, but I want to go to books. And so it's searching the resources, and I'm just going to type in uh, an exact quote. So you see the magic happen, biblical... Revelation, and I do that, and you see there now we have uh, obviously different sections like we always do in the searches, so fact book, downloaded books, right, so those are the books that I have in my library, but if you go down, once you get to, maybe I'll just close it, that'll be quicker, 
you see cloud books if I have, and then you see print books. So there it is, Who is God? Key Moments in Biblical Revelation. You see there, page, uh, Roman numeral three, page one. So I can go now to my physical book, and I can take it off the shelf, and I can find what I just found in my search there. So this is just so, so great. Uh, for those of you who are kind of techy like me and have, had, have wanted to do things like this before, well, one, either I've just gone and buy, bought the Logos book, which I've done on occasion because I'm making heavy use of a book in research and writing, and it just at a certain point became uh, more convenient to have it in Logos, so I end up having it as digital and physical, which I don't like doing. Um, but the other thing that I have done in the past is I've gone to uh, Google Books, so books.google.com, and I've done the search that way, in hopes of finding the quotation that I can remember but can't quite find in my physical book, in hopes that I can find it. But, of course, Google Books doesn't always show you it. It has limited search uh, allowances now. Um, so it was less and less handy as time went on. This uh, really solves that, and it solves it in an integrated way where it places my print books and my Logos books together so that I can search it and I can still make good use of my physical books. And, of course, if I find, oh, this is going to be way more helpful for me to have in Logos, then I can quickly purchase that book once I, again, click it open, um, take a look at it, and if I wanted to buy it, I can. So that is the print catalog. Like I said, my favorite new feature of Logos 10 and uh, this is just a quick review. You will find more uh, both on Logos's website um, as well as other affiliate users like myself who will be posting videos and reviews on Logos 10. And you'll find below uh, the YouTube channel or the YouTube video as well as my blog post uh, if you're interested in updating. Uh, the updating Logos is always cheapest when it first comes out. Sometimes you'll get uh, also good deals around Christmas time, but in terms of upgrade, uh, this is if you're thinking about it, this is the time to do it, and uh, you get the uh, discount affiliate discount that I can provide because I'm an affiliate with Logos. Uh, up to you if you want to use my link or not. Uh, but just one nice little perk: uh, if you do use the affiliate link, is that they've updated uh, the free books that come along with an upgrade purchase. Um, five free books that come if you use affiliate links and uh, they're pretty good books too I was really happy to see that they've changed it up because um, it was kind of the same for the last couple of years so there's new ones now uh, which is really good too so uh, if you're interested in updating in log to Logos 10 I recommend you use the link that you find uh, in the description below or on my blog post thanks guys